I know you're approached by a large group of players, but the others who might be a little less convinced, um, how have they been responding to the opportunity or the, the possibility of joining the PTPA? Well, that exercise yesterday was, was a great, you know, it had a ton of utility for me because everything in tennis, from my vantage, needs improvement. Um, to the players who are skeptical, and there certainly are some, because there are some who say, look, especially as an individual sport, you want to make more money, win more. Right, and, and, and you know, if you win more, lots of other things happen. You, you don't have to pay for your flights, maybe. You don't have to pay for your own hotel, which, by the way, they do. You, don't, you, you still have to pay your coach and your own physio, um, but those things are easier. Um, so for those players, though, um, and we have a former world number one women's tennis player right now who tested positive, allegedly, in September of last year, she's still waiting for an appeal hearing. It's the end of May, and so, Everybody has at least one thing that they care about. And so finding the one thing for the players who might be not necessarily running with arms wide open to a players association has been really useful because whether it's gambling policy and how to monetize or, or you know, drug testing, uh, appeals uh, fine uh, uh, you know, process and support, we had a player get fined on Monday more than he made the entirety of 2022. He got fined $130,000. He only made 110 gross. Uh, in uh, before taxes, before any of his own expenses in 2022. And he didn't, you would think he jumped across the net and choked his opponent out. He, he like threw a ball on the court to try to trick the umpire, which is bad sport, sportsmanship, admittedly. Um, but does that make any sense? And is anybody there to support him and his appeal? So it's, it's really about finding issues that people care about.